Are you wondering whether it's important to minimize oxygen in your mashing or sparging water? Do oxygen levels vary depending on water temperature? Well, I asked that very question to two brewmasters, and I was so surprised at all the efforts that they make to drive down oxygen pickup throughout the entire process. Now, be sure to watch till the very end, especially for the tip there on carbonating your sparge water. The topic of hot side oxidation is um, one that always comes up, and I think it's a good topic. I think it does make a difference. You have, I think the one and only time where you really want to introduce oxygen or air into your stream is aerating cold wort before you're putting the yeast in there. That is the one and only time. Every other time you should try to to keep it away. With the, In the brew house, we are de-aerating our water. We've got a, a that's a, it's a membrane uh, type system which can exchange oxygen for nitrogen in the water, in the liquid water. And so we're removing the oxygen from the water for mashing in. This is important in our case where we're using a, a wet mill or a, a hydrating mill. But in this mill, you're adding the mash water at the same time as you're crushing your malt. And there's a lot of turbulence. There's a lot of agitation going on. And when the presence of oxygen, you're going to have really a lot of exchange between your malt and your wort and the oxygen in an environment like that. So we take it out of the water. And then the mill, we can also purge the gas space with nitrogen during that process. Other than that, I think the classic rules apply where if you can, when you're transferring into your mash, for example, or from your mash into your louder, and if that is the one and the same, then of course you don't have the problem. But transfer from the bottom of the one vessel into the bottom of the other vessel. You want to avoid splashing. Splashing is not good. But try to avoid that. And in, in the loudering with sparging, the classic rule there is you can maintain over the top of your grain bed a very thin liquid surface, a film of water. As that sparge water is spraying down, the sparge water is hot, by the way. And hot water has a less, oxygen is less soluble the hotter the water is. So in the water, it's maybe not that bad. But if you're spraying it on a dry grain bed in your louder tone, you're going to be putting a lot of oxygen into your, into your wort. Tobias, what do you think? What do you guys do? Yes, the same. Absolutely. As you said, hot water has less uh, potential to, to oxidize. So that's why it's not a big deal with the sparging water, but it's a big deal with the spent grains if they are not protected by a water film or a word film. So that's why what I said before with the decoction system, what is oxidization? Where is it? And fatty acids, for example, when they have no water around, when they, when you let jump it into the, to the mesh tan, for example. So that's not good, but everything else in the brewers, I think it's uh, less potential to oxidize something because it's hot water, but the colder it gets, the more important it, it is. And I would say even harder than Scott, the only thing who needs oxygen in the brewery is, is, is the word he said. And I think the only thing is uh, yeast. You have to ox um, to oxi uh, put some oxygen into the word, of course, but the word the cold word also doesn't like uh, oxygen. So beer and oxygen are big enemies. They don't like each other. Um, that's why. <clears throat> protect everything. We have a deaeration system for our pro processing water, for example, for our brewing water and for our processing water. So we do it more or less. It's a, it's like a stripping method. So we put some CO2 into the, to the brew water and strip all the oxygen out to have a, a water with less than one PPM or 0 0.5 PPM oxygen. Because then we have the water, we can flash the pipes, for example, from fermentation tank to storage tank, from storage tank to filtration, from filtration to BBT to, to filling line. We flash every line with deaerated water just to be sure to have as less as possible oxygen in, in the whole process. 
Because if you, for example, have a don't do that or you don't carbonize, pressurize your tank before filling it up after fermentation. So we have a two tank system. When we go from the fermentation tank to the storage tank, maturation tank, we have to prepare the tank before with a CO2. So that's why we normally just clean it with, with acid. So then we can do it under CO2 atmosphere. With caustic, it's completely destroyed. That's why a maturation tank you can clean with, a, with acid. And then you have still the CO2 inside. And after that, you will flash it again with CO2. We measure the, the oxygen content on the tank outlet or on the highest point because CO2 will let it in from the bottom because it's heavier than oxygen. And then we push out the oxygen because when you oxidize your beer in the lager tank, for example, then you, you will not find any oxygen content in the finished beer but you will find a very bad taste because it's already oxidized in the lager tank. So that's why it's absolutely key to look on the oxygen in the whole process, not only on the water, which you use for brewing. It's even worse in the cold part of the brewery. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea the extent you went to, to use to deoxygenate nearly everything except mm. the wart. That's phenomenal. <laughs> now this was just one clip from the entire replay. And I've posted the replay link here on the screen and in the description. And don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what your top takeaway was. A like is always appreciated too.